Happy Hump Day! Hoje é quarta-feira. Se você não sabe o que é Hump Day, vá lá no Camel e pergunta para um dos professores. Ha! Te peguei nessa história agora. Isso tudo para falar que a promoção ainda está rolando. Até o dia 7 de julho, você pode aproveitar 47% de desconto em qualquer plano anual, seja de adulto ou de kids. Nós recebemos várias mensagens de adultos querendo dar de presente para suas kids um plano do Cambly. E tá aí, vocês pediram no Iclu, no Icru, <risos> aceitou assim como o Cambly. Então, 47% de desconto em qualquer plano anual. Vão lá no Cambly.com ou no aplicativo do Cambly, se inscrevam, coloquem e-mail, coloquem no Icru 47 Off, se for plano de adulto, ou no Icru 47 Off Kids, se for criança entre 3 a 14 anos de idade. Mais importante também, esses dois descontos dão ainda 10 minutos de graça para quem ainda não faz parte do Cambly. Você já faz parte do Cambly? Ótimo! Você pode aproveitar essa promoção também. É só fazer o upgrade do seu plano. <risos> então, agora, on with the show! We travel then. In part, just to shake up our complacencies. So hard this word. Again, we travel then, in part, just to shake up our complacencies. Complacencies. By seeing all the moral and political urgencies, the life and death that dilemmas, and we seldom have to face at home. And we travel to fill in the gaps left by tomorrow's headlines. When you drive down the streets of Port-au-Prince, for example, where there is almost no paving and women relieve themselves next to mountains of trash, your notions of the internet and a one better one world order grow usefully revised. Travel is the best way we have to rescuing, rescuing the humanity of places and saving them from their abstraction and ideology. And in the process, we also get saved from, from abstraction ourselves and come to see how much we can bring to the places we visit and how much we can become a kind of carrier pigeon an anti-federal express, if you like, in transporting back and forth what every culture needs. I find that I always take Michael Jordan posters to Kyoto and bring woven Ikebana baskets back to California. I invariably travel to Cuba, Cuba, sorry. I invariably travel to Cuba with a suitcase Peeled high with bottles of Tylenol. What? Piled. Okay, again. I invariably travel to Cuba with a suitcase piled high with bottles of Tylenol and bars of soap and come back with one piled high with salsa tapes and hopes and letters to long lost brothers. But most significantly, we carry values and beliefs and news to the places we go. And in many parts of the world, we become walking video screens and living newspapers and the only channels that can take people out of the censored limits of their homelands. In closed and impar impoverished places like Pagan or Lhasa or Havana, we are the eyes and ears of the people we meet. They are only contact with the world outside and very often the closest, quite literally, they will ever come to Michael Jackson or Bill Clinton. Not the least of the challenges we travel, therefore, is learning how to import and export dreams with tenderness. By now, all of us have heard too often the old pro, pro, Proust, 
<laughs> By now, all of us have heard too often the old Proust line about how the Rio Voyage... Voyage? No. It's really hard to say... How do I say it? Voyage. Voyage. Okay, again. By now, all of us have heard too often the old Proust line about how the Rio Voyage of discovery consists not in seeing new places, but in seeing with new eyes. Yet, one of the subtler beauties, beauties of travel is that it enables you to bring new eyes to the people you encounter. Thus, even as holidays help you appreciate your own home more, not least by seeing it through a distant admirer's eyes. They help you bring newly appreciative, distant eyes to the places you visit. You can teach them what they have to celebrate as much as you celebrate what they have to teach. This, I think, is how tourism, which so obviously destroys cultures, can also resuscitate or revive them. How it has created new traditional dances in Bali and caused craftsmen in India to pay new attention to their works. The first thing we can bring to Cubans is a real and balanced sense of what contemporary America is like. The second and per perhaps more important thing we can bring them is a fresh and renewed sense of how special are the warmth and beauty of their country for those who can compare it with other places around the globe. Thus, travel spins us around in two ways at once. It shows us the sights and values and issues that we might ordinarily ignore, but it also, and more deeply, shows us all the parts of ourselves that might otherwise grow rusty. For in traveling to a truly foreign, foreign place, we inevitably travel to moods and states of mind and hidden inward passages that we otherwise seldom have cause to visit. On the most basic level, when I'm in Thailand, though a Tito Taylor, Tito Taylor, teetotaler, teetotaler, who usually, usually goes to bed at 9 p.m. I stay up till dawn in the local bars and in Tibet. Though not a real Buddhist, I spend days on end in temples listening to the chants and sutras. I go to Iceland to visit the lunar spaces within me and and the uncanny quietude and emptiness of that vast and treeless world to tap parts of myself generally obscured by chatter and routine. We travel then in search of both self and anonymity, 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 anonymity. Okay, we travel then in search of both self and enmity, and of course, in finding the one we apprehend the other. Abroad, we are wonderfully free of caste and job and standing. We are, as Hazlitt puts it, just the gentleman in the parlor, and people cannot put a name or a tag to us. And precisely, because we are clarified in this way and freed in inessential labels, we have the opportunity to come into contact with more essential parts of ourselves, which may begin to explain why we may feel most alive when far from home. Abroad is a place where we stay up late, follow impulse, and find ourselves as wide open as when we are in love. We live without a past or future, for a moment at least, and are ourselves 
up for grabs and open to interpretation. We even may become mysterious to others at first and sometimes to ourselves. And as no less a dignitary than Oliver Cromwell once noted, a man never goes so far as when he doesn't know where he's going. Hello, hello, and thank you for listening to another episode of English no Ikuru Haju. If you like what we do, if you are enjoying Alexia suffering a little bit, reading wonderfully from a beautiful travel writing piece, then tune in tomorrow, because tomorrow we will have another analysis, and if you like this kind of thing, then be sure to check out EnglishNuKru.com. We have a lot of really cool things coming your way. New applications for an updated version of our pronunciation and conversation course Sound School, as well as some really, really cool new updates for worksheets for all of these episodes. So if you're interested in that, check out EnglishNuKru.com. And as always, keep up the good fight and lose well. Até já já.